Mr. G, we can, we can begin. All right, thank you. Good morning all, welcome to Python coding. Lesson three, just a reminder to everyone that if you have missed lesson one and two, you can always go back to the YouTube site, Africa Teen Greeks, and look at the videos that have been posted, uploaded. And once you go to the site, if you go to the videos tab, you will scroll down and you'll find that the videos have been uploaded for the past two days. For those of you all that's also still new to coding in Python, please, it would be nice that if you'd go to Mr. Riaz's videos as well, because he starts off from the basic grade eight work and he'll continue from that point. Okay. Now, as for Python code lesson three, let's have a quick recap of what we did yesterday. We went off and we did the number system table where I showed you that if you have different types of numbers being added, multiplied, divided together, you'd get different types of output. So then we went to the math module. The math module showed us that we've got other things to work with except the double star, which is also the same as power. Then we went on to string manipulation. And I showed you that the lower function when used will allow us to convert the text that the person has given us to lowercase. And lowercase means small letters. The upper function that will allow us to convert all our letters uh, in a text to capital letters or uppercase. Then we went on to the length function. The length allowed us to see how many characters are in a sentence or how long a sentence is. A uh, quick reminder there that a space is also a character. So when you count in, you have to count the spaces as characters as well. Then finally, we went and did the index. The index is our search. So we, that this allowed us to search a sentence for a specific letter or a specific combination of letters. And remember, Python is case sensitive, so case matters means you have to spell it correctly and it has to be spelled the same if it capital letter a it has to be capital letter a so be careful when you're using the index as well All right before we move on any further there i quickly want to show you one more function the function i want to show you is the random function the random function allows us to generate to create random numbers without inputting anything. So we use random numbers. We can make the computer generate as many random numbers as we want. So before we can actually start using the random function, we first have to make sure that we have imported the random, just like how the math module we have to import. When we use in the random function, we have to import it. So I'm gonna quickly create a Python file and we, I'm going to show you the import statement. The import statement is from random. We want to import and we'll put down star. Remember the star in this case in the top here doesn't mean multiplication. It means everything. It's a wild card. It can stand for anything. Think of a joker in a deck of cards. A joker can stand for any card. So when we say from random import, Import star, it means import everything that's there in random. Next, if you look at the structure for random, it's random range, and we give it a start number and end number. What does this mean? It means simply if I go and just show you that as an output, I can go print random range, start number and end number, so I can go one and 10. So the start number I'm telling the computer, you will start looking at the numbers one and you'll go up to 10. So this will give me the numbers. Oh, sorry. All right, so this would give me the numbers 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It will not include the 10th number. You see, what happens is the first number is included, but the second number is not. We're going to generate, we're going to create a number from one to 10, not including the number 10, right? So that's what the next two bullets tell us that the start number is included in the numbers. So this is my start number. It's included in the number. There's it there. And the end number is not included. So if I look at the number 10, it's not showing in one of my numbers. So I'm going to be generating the numbers one to nine. For those of you that's looking, what's this red writing here? This red writing is what we call comments. Comments are pieces of writing in a code that the code sorry, the compiler itself will not run. That means the computer will read all these lines. So it'll read the first line. When it comes to read the second line, it'll stop there. It ignores anything in red. So we can write down comments to tell us what we are doing in that point. So that's what I'm gonna do there. So I'm gonna go quickly, file, save. I'm gonna direct myself to lesson three. Random range. I'm going to quickly run this file now to show you what happened. So we're going to run it. Because it runs on my other screen. So there we go. So when I ran this file, it generated and displayed the number four. So I can continuously run this program. Again, it generated four, but you'll see that there we go. It generated another number nine. Now this number that's been generated is a random set between one to 10. So it can be any numbers from the set that will be given to us. So that's what random range does. It allows us to generate numbers. Now you may be thinking, not a big guy, not a big deal. We can enter a number if we wanted. Yes, we can. But you see, a lot of games and a lot of other programs out there use the random function to generate information for the user. For example, if I wanted to play a little game with you all, and the game is pick a number. Yes. I'm sorry, I, I think my computer dropped internet at that point. Right. So if we look at the program that I've got here, I've created a program that will generate a number from one to five. That would be a guessing game. So if I guess the number three and the number four was outputted, if I guess the number three the second time, it gave me the answer. Right. So this is a guessing game. And if you want to look at the code, this is the code for that guessing game. I'm sorry, it seems that the whole thing dropped off. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> okay, so this was what I was talking about when my internet dropped off. The guessing game, the first time I ran it, it told me enter a number and I chose the number three. So if I chose the number three, it told me the first time, sorry, I was thinking of the number four. But the second time I ran it, I guessed the number three again, because I know this is a random generating game. So the chances of me getting it the second time on the same number is okay. And I got it right the second time. And to show you the code for it, this is the code for it. And we'll be getting to this code just now. 
right? So if you notice, I said the first line from random import star, that means I imported everything. And I said, okay, the computer is gonna store a generated number. And that generated number is going to be a random number. So I'm gonna choose a random range from one to five. So that means the numbers one, two, three, four is gonna be shown. So I may tell you choose a number from one to five, but it's only four possibilities. So we got a one in four chance of getting it right. And of course, the next part is I'm going to get the input from the user. So I'm asking the user, please give me a number what they think it is. And we learned that the other day on how to use input. All right. Next. I said, okay, the result is going to be int guess number one or guess number. So what the person has entered. And I'm gonna check if it's equal to the generated number. Now you'll notice that the way we say equal to in Python is a double equal to sign. The reason it's a double equal to sign is because the first equal to sign simply means store. So if I want to actually use the word equal to in programming, I would use the double equal to sign. All right. All right. The next part of this part of the code, we'll get to just now. So don't worry about that. So that was the random. Next. Again, I explained it here. So example, if you chose a random range one to five, you'll generate numbers one, two, and three, and four. All right, so today's work that we're gonna quickly go through is the condition statement. A condition statement is you're going to have choices in life. And if you're gonna have choices, it's either you're gonna do something or not do something. So there's normally two outcomes if you have a single decision, right? So we look at condition statements. Condition statements are used to determine flow of an outcome. If a condition is true, you can perform one action. If it's false, you can perform another. For example, if you're going to cross a road, you'll cross the road only under the condition that the road is clear or there's no oncoming cars. All right, so I gave you two examples here. Example one, if you pass someone on the street, when you pass somebody on the street, if you know them, there's a good possibility that you'll greet to them. You'll greet them and you'll talk to them. But if you don't know them, you'll probably walk past them. Excuse me, Mr. G, sorry right. to disturb. We can only see the yes. YouTube screen. Yes. We can, can only see only the YouTube screen, sorry. Yes, we can't see uh, what you're actually doing. Okay, so none of it what else is okay. I'll start over again. So you understood what I was talking about there. Sorry about that. Can you now see the second screen? Yes, yes, we can. All right. Okay, let me just open up that program. Clear the shell so you can see it. So this was the program I was talking about so long. Sorry about that. Okay. So if we look at the program, I said from random import star, that meant import everything. Then we'd had the generate number. So I said generate number is equal to random range one to five. One to five, this will generate numbers one, two, three, and Four. So if I say, okay, let's guess a number that's there. So I'm gonna ask the user to enter a number. What do you think that I've generated? So that's what that line, the second line does. It's asking the user for the input. And finally I tell, okay, my result is going to be, I'm gonna convert this number that the person has given me. Remember the person is entering text. And when I generate a number, it's a normal number. So it's normal text, it's an integer. So I convert that number into an integer. Next, I say, okay, 
I'm going to con check if the numbers are actually equal. So is the number on the left equal to the number on the right? And the way we say equal to in Python programming is using a double equal to sign. The reason we do this is because a single equal to sign means whatever's on the right needs to be saved to the left. Whatever's on the right needs to be stored on the left. So our answer that's coming here is going to be stored on the left. So if I end, so if the computer over here generated the number three and I guessed the number was also three, and, uh, the red right in the computer doesn't read. So that's our comments. So if I guessed it, the answer would be true. Is three equal to three? The answer is yes, true. So that would be the result will store true. And this part of the code is the one that checks everything for us. And we'll be getting to that just now. All right, so if I quickly run this program and show you what the output was. Here we have the output. So I got the first time I ran it, I told, okay, what number of things I'm thinking of? I'm gonna say four. And the computer tells me, sorry, the number I was thinking about is two, because remember the computer is going to generate the numbers for us. So it can be any number between one and five. So if we run it again. So eventually the numbers I enter would be the number that's guessed. Now, depending on how many times you generate the number, it will be a chance of getting it right. Next, if I go back to the condition statements, that's the last part that there that I need to show you all. Condition statements are, condition statements are used to determine the flow of a outcome. If a condition is true, you can perform one action and if it's false, you perform another. Now, this is what I was talking about. If you go to the street and you want to cross the road, you'll only cross if the street is clear or if there's no oncoming cars. Example one, you pass somebody on the street. If you know the person, you'll stop and talk to them, greet them, unless you're not talking to them. If you don't know the person that's passing you, you'll pa walk past them without talking.
<laughs> okay guys uh the teacher's still trying to connect just hang tight uh he's going to be on in a few minutes now thank you It says my microphone is unmuted. Yo, it says that ish. I'm so sorry about that. It seems my computer is dropping the internet. Right, so let's see if I can hold a stable connection now. Okay, so the last thing I stopped on was the condition statement. And this allows us to check items, whether it's true or false. And if you remember from yesterday's work, that there is a variable type that allows us to check if an item is true or false and that variable type was Boolean, right? So next, how do we use the condition statement? The condition statement is used as follows. It's called the if statement. And if you look at the if statement, the syntax is if, and we put in a condition, condition means something is greater than, less than. And once we put in a condition, we can now check what must we do if it is true. So what you should understand is the run or this if statement will only run when this condition is true. So if it is false, the statement below it will not run. We look at the first bullet. First, you need to understand that the if statement will only run if the condition given is true. So this condition has to be true in order for us to do some work. The line after the condition is indented. Indented means it's pushed in compared to where the if is. And what does this mean? It means that anything that is indented that is pushed in after the if statement will run straight after that condition statement. Right. Now, what are the different operators we can use for the if statement? The conditions or the operators we can use for the if statement, the first one I showed you on that other screen was the double equal to operator. The double equal to operator means equal to. So if I say A is equal to equal to B, it's comparing. Is what is inside A the same as it's inside B? So that's what it's doing. Then we have the exclamation mark equal to. The exclamation mark equal to means not equal to. So if I say not equal to B. So is the, the item inside A different from B? Then we have the greater than sign. That means greater than. So I can check if A is greater than B. That means I can normally do this with numbers. Is the number three greater than the number five? Or is the number five greater than number two? 
course, we'll get answers of whether it's true or false. Then we have less than, A is less than B, and we have greater than equal to, less than equal to. This is, these four our normal maths operators, so you should understand those ones. Right, quickly going into Python to show you how it's used. So if I open up Python, sorry, file new. Okay, so let's show you quickly what I was talking about. So if I go, number one is equal to three. Number two is equal to five. I want to see now the results. Is number one greater than number five? So we're gonna go, num is number one greater than number two? Why I'm using the variables? Because the variables are storing the numbers. So later on, I can just change these two numbers and it'll change over here. Now I can go and put down my if statement. Remember the if statement only runs when the result is true. So currently, currently, if we have to look at this, the number one is holding three. So it's checking here. Is three greater than five? And we all know three is not greater than five. So the answer should be false. That's wrong. So I'm going to go. If number one is greater than number two, colon, and if I press enter, you'll notice that the pointer goes to the next line, but it doesn't go at the start. It goes on the indented line. So anything under this now is what we're going to put for the if statement. So I go print, and I can say yes. Yes. Number two is the bigger number. Now the same thing I can do, and I can reverse it, and I can go result is equal to, this time I'm gonna reverse it, I'm gonna put less than, number one less than, number two. And this time it's gonna check for us, is three less than five. And now I can go if number one less than number two. And if this is true, I need to print yes, number one is the bigger number. Now if I run this, it'll ask me to save. So yes, I'm gonna save, which is the bigger number. So the bigger number, here we go. And if you notice from both these statements, the first statement and the second statement, the second statement is the one that ran because number three is smaller than number five. So that's why it said the first number is the bigger number. Sorry, put the wrong one around. Oh. Okay. So that's our if statement. So if we go with the that was supposed to be two. That was supposed to be one. All right. So if I change the numbers now, it'll continuously check for me. Now, I can have two statements running one then. Remember, this is just one check. Is one number bigger than the other number? That's where we can have a, what we call an if else statement. An if else statement is just like how you'd cross the street if you come to the roadblock or oh, you come to the road and the street is busy, you're not going to cross. Otherwise, you will cross. Why? Because the street wasn't busy. So we can do the same thing for the if statement. We can have an if else part of the work. 
and how the if else works. So I'm going to quickly comment all this out so you can see it properly. Right, so file new. And you go. Number one equal to three. Number two equal to five. Just going to copy this line here. If the number one is greater than number two, then yes, number one is the bigger number else is written like that. So if this isn't true, so if the top part isn't true, what should the outcome be? The outcome should be number two is bigger. So I'm going to print number two is bigger. So this is what we call an if else statement. If the first condition is false, the else part will run. So we have a true statement and we have a false statement in one part. So now if I run it, number two is bigger. And yes, I can change it to any numbers and it'll still work. This time it tells me number one is bigger because we go and look Number one is 14, number two is five. Is number one bigger than number two? Yes, so the first number is bigger. All right. So that's the if else statement. It allows us to check two things. It allows us to check true, and it allows us to say, okay, if it's not true, it must be false. All right. Next, a problem to work with. Number one, design a program that will receive two numbers and display which of the numbers are bigger, right? And if you notice, we've already done something similar to that. We've got two numbers and we display which one of those two are bigger. So the only difference from the problem one to our program here is that in the problem one, it tells us we have to receive two numbers. And how do we receive two numbers? And for those of y'all that said input, that's correct. So I'm gonna go. Input, I'm gonna say input, I'm gonna say enter n number one. I'm gonna do for the same thing for the second one. Enter n number two. Now remember now, this is gonna check is number one greater than number two. So if I run this program as is at the point, it's going to be one problem. If I go, enter in the first number, uh, let's leave some space there so you can see it's not actually one. So that was my user-friendly environment. All right. So it's asking us, enter in number one, and if we go 12, we enter in number two and we go three, number two, is bigger. And if we look at it, is number two bigger? No. Number one is bigger. The reason for this is because if we look at this, what does the input box get? The input box gets text string. We compare in numbers. So when we compare in numbers, we need to make sure that it is a number that we are comparing. So I'm going to go and put in front of it it's going to be an integer number that I'm comparing. Now if I run it, thirteen and two. Number one is bigger. You can run it again. Go the other way around. Uh, four, seventeen. Number two is bigger. So I can now compare numbers and check if numbers are bigger than the other. And that is what the guessing game did. It allowed us to check if one number was bigger than the other number. I'm just gonna open up the guessing game. 
fine. So if you look at this, it said the result and over here I did it as a result. I didn't put it inside the if statement. But if we look at it, if the person's number is equal to, remember double equal to means equal to the guest number. So I see, okay, result, if it's true, you remind me that that means you guessed it right. If it's not true, you guessed it wrong. Now these are two statements. Now I could have put it as how I put it here with an else part. We have put it under one statement, right? So there's two ways of writing if statements. There's the if else and having multiple if statements instead of putting if else. Now you'll notice that there's only one thing that I didn't show you yet. What's this word not here? Okay, the word not here means not what is inside. So it means the opposite of whatever your result is. So if my result was true, it'll say false. If my result was false, it'll say true. Understand that's a bit confusing, but when I show you on the table just now, you should understand what I'm talking about, All right? Before we go to that, let's answer question two. So when you go file, new project, well, new file, and we're gonna read this problem. Design a program for a restaurant that will calculate the amount of tip a customer needs to leave for a waiter based on how much they have spent. So people are going to a restaurant and they don't know how much tip they must leave for the waiter. And we've got some conditions for this tip. When the bill is less than equal to 500 Rand, the tip will be 10% of the bill. So if your bill was less than or equal to 500 Rand, you have to pay a 10% tip. But when the bill is more than 500 Rand, the tip is 15%. So let's do this problem both ways. Let's go with the first part and say, what is it that we are going to input? What are we going to let the user enter? And if we look from the problem, the customer, customer needs to tell us how much their bill was. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to get the bill from the customer. So we're gonna say bill, we're gonna input it. So we're gonna say, enter in your bill. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, once we got the bill, if that bill is less than equal to 500, it'll be 10% of the bill. That means you're gonna calculate what 10% of the amount they entered into. So we're gonna go, if the bill that we've got is less than equal to 500, we're going to do some work. But if we look carefully again, bill, is text. They may enter a number, but remember the input box gives us text. So we need to tell the computer, this is not text. This should be integer and int because we're comparing numbers. We compare numbers with numbers, letters with letters. So we shouldn't have the bill as text. So now that we've got the bill is less than or equal to 500, we can do some work. What's the work we must do? We need to calculate how much the tip is going to be. And we're gonna say, okay, so the tip is going to be 10% of the bill. So we need to figure out how do we calculate 10% of the bill? So we say, okay, it's going to be the bill amount times and 10% is 10 divided by 100. Remember the percentage sign in 10% means divide by 100. And when we do calculations, we don't put a percentage sign in our calculation. Because if you remember, what does the percentage sign mean? It means modulus mod, right? So I go bill times 10 over 100. But you might be saying, sir, there's something wrong. You told us that the bill is text. And we're dealing with numbers here. So in the front here, I need to put int to convert that bill into integer. Because if we know our bills properly, 
we deal in with money and when we deal with money it's normally rands and cents so we have decimals so i'm going to put floats right in both these cases so i floated the bill in both points those of you all that was uh, telling out loud in yourselves that sir should i put float there congratulations you got it right there next once we've got the tip we can print out how much the tip is going to be so i can go print the tip should be, and I can say how much in rands. So the tip should be, and I'm going to add on the tip amount. Now, if you notice, tip, it's a calculation. It's with division and multiplication, so it's going to be a float. But when we display, we can only display one type at a time. And the moment you see green writing, we display in text. So this tip needs to be converted to text, which is string. So we say str tip. Now, at this point in time, the program will run. But it'll only run for one point. run it, enter the bill amount, I say 300. And 10% of 300 is 30 rand. So that's the tip amount. But if I decided, okay, I'm going to run it again. And this time I say the bill amount is 700 rand. And you'll notice that nothing happens. The thing is, the computer worked with it, but because 700 wasn't less than equal to 500, this part never run. So now we need to do the if statement for what happens if the number is greater than 500. So I can say if, and I'm just going to copy this entire thing here. And because remember, coding, we can copy and paste. Why type out the entire thing if you don't have to? So copy and pasted it. And now I'm going to change some information. I'm no more checking if it's less than or equal to 500. I'm checking if it's greater than 500. And if it's greater than 500, I look at my question. My question tells me when it's more than 500, the tip will be 15% of the bill. So I can say, OK, the bill is going to be not 10%, but 15%. And now I'm done with that one section because everything else remains the same. So when coding, be smart. You can copy and paste. So my bill now is 700. They'll tell me 105 rand is the tip. Now we can finally at the end of it say, all right, now that we worked out the tip, we can say, okay, the final bill is equal to the tip plus the bill amount. Or if you want to go the other way around, the bill amount plus the tip. But some of you may be screaming, screaming. Bill is text, it is string. You need to convert it before you put it there. So we're going to convert it. We're going to say floats. Now, if I just put that float one time here, there wouldn't be any need to use it anywhere else. But we're going to keep it as is. So now I got my final amount. I can say print your final bill is. And I can put a price there. Can add, add on final bull. I go now run it. This part is a little troublesome, so I'm just going to put the colon there. Run. Here's my program. 
right. So if we go step by step, if my bill is 501 rand, let's look at it. Bill is going to start 501. It's going to come to the if statement. It's going to say, okay, 501 is going to be converted to a real number. So I'm going to say, is 501 less than equal to 500? The answer is no. So because the answer here is no, this part won't run. It's going to go to the next line. It's going to say, is the 501 greater than 500? The answer is yes, it's true. And because the answer is yes, it's true. It's going to go into the next line and it's going to tell us to run that line. So it'll say tip is the bill amount 501 times 15 over 100. And it's going to print the tip. Now these two lines are not a part of the if statements because it's not indented, it's not pushed in. So it'll come to this line and it'll say the bill amount plus the tip. So if I put 501, the tip should be 75 and the final amount, it broke. And if you notice the error on the final amount, why it broke, it told us can only concatenate string, not float. We look at this line, it's telling us it's this line. Remember when we did this calculation, the calculation was float. But when we displayed it, the display had a string, this entire green text is string, and we add in a float to it. So we needed to change the final amount to string. Now if I run it, same one. And I put 501 this time, won't break. And we've got 501 plus the 75 rand is 576 rand 15 cents. So it gave us the total bill, including the tip. So that was the if statement with two if statements there. Now we can do the same thing and we can change it to one if statement. Remember, there's only two outcomes. If the bill is less than 500, we must do one work. If it's greater than 500, we must do something else. So if it's true, I must do that. If it's false, I must do that. And we can do that in a little bit easier work. I'm gonna just copy. I'm gonna paste. I'm gonna save it. This time I'm gonna tip version two. Put it next to each other so you can actually see the difference. All right, so we're gonna go with this. And I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to erase this line because if it's not less than 500, it has to be bigger than 500. So all I'm going to do is put an else statement there. If it's not less than 500, it has to be greater than 500. And that's all. That's all you have to do to change it from a one statement to, or oh, sorry, a two statement to a one statement. Now, why I call this a one statement is because if the first part is true, it'll do the calculation for us and it'll do the calculation and display. But once this part here is true, it'll ignore the else. It's like, as I said, if you go to the street to cross the road, if there's no car, us, you'll cross. You won't even think about stopping and waiting after that. The same thing here. If it is bill is less than 500, it's not even going to consider going to the next part. But over here, whether the first one runs, it'll still read the second one. Why? Because that is an if statement, while this is an if else statement. There we go, same answer, All right? So this is our if statement and how we can use it. Now, there's different ways of using the if statement and we're gonna go to the not part, the logic operators. So if we look at the logic operators, we have an operator and or not. And if we look at the description, the and operator, 
this will now check both sides of a condition. And if both sides of the condition is true, it'll give you an answer of true. For example, just gonna open up the Python shell to show you it there. If I go, is three greater than five and three greater than two? Let's change it to one. You're gonna tell me three greater than one? Yes, true. Is three greater than two? Yes. Now it'll check both the conditions. And if the, both the conditions are true, our answer is going to be true. But if one of the conditions is false, now if you look, is three greater than five? No, false. And is three greater than two? True. So we get false, true. False and true is false. Why? We check in both conditions have to be true. So that's what the and statement does. It checks both sides and checks if both sides is true, then the answer is true. If one of the sides have to be false, then the statement is going to be false. That means our answer is going to be false. On the opposite end, we have or. The or statement tells us whether we have one side true or both sides true, as long as I have a true there, my answer is true. For example, let's open up the console again. You notice that we had the first one as three and one. If I change it now to or, the answer is going to be true. So I, my syntax I copied was wrong. I had space in front. All right. The answer is true. Three is greater than one. Oh, man. I'm sorry. Three is greater than one or three greater than two. So that's true. That's true. So this answer is also true. But when it comes to the next part, let's copy it from there. So you can see I'm taking the correct one, making sure there's no space and changing it to all. Remember, this answer here, when I use the and statement said, okay, the answer is false. But when I use the or statement, the answer is going to be true. Why? Because it said, is three greater than five? No. But is three greater than two? Yes. I got false or true. And false or true's answer is true. So what does this mean? When we work with or, any side of our condition can be true and we will get a true answer. For example, if I were to put it in real life situation, if you go to the shop and you want to buy Oh, sorry, I broke up again. Right. So if you go to the shop and you want to buy some items, let's say your dad sent you or your mom sent you to buy a box of cigarettes. Now, please know you're underage, you shouldn't be buying cigarettes. Right. So the shopkeeper is going to ask you, are you 18 years old? You're going to tell them no. And they'll tell you the answer is no. But if you go with your parent to the shop to buy cigarettes, they'll look at your parent and say, okay, is your child 18 years old? They'll tell you no, but since you are an adult, you can buy it. So the answer is no, but since you are greater than, sorry, since your parent is bigger than 18, therefore the answer is true, they can buy it. So that's how you could work with that. Next. an exercise, right? This exercise I want you to try. Some learners at your school are having a problem to determine if they have passed or failed a test. So they ask you to create a program for them to enter in the subject mark 
and max mark. Your program must then determine and display if they have passed the test and we assume that 30% is passed. Now I'm gonna start you off with this, but you're going to finish up the condition. So let's start off a new file. Right, and let's look at this. What, what is going to be the input for this entire exercise? If I read the question again, the question tells me some learners at the school are having a problem to determine if they have passed or failed a test. So they ask you to create a program for them to enter in. So this is where is my input's going to be. So what I'm entering in. I'm entering in the subject mark. So the subject mark is what that learner got. Then they also have to enter in the maximum mark. Maximum mark means what is the test out of? So they got 30 out of 60 for the example here. Then finally, your program must determine and display if they have passed or failed. So your program must determine if the person has passed. And how do we determine if the person has passed? By doing a calculation. The calculation is we're going to convert the learner's mark into a percentage because they tell us that 30% is the pass mark. So we say 30 out of 60, which is 50%. So I'm going to start you off with this and you're going to finish it. So let's go. The first thing, we're going to enter in the learner's mark. So we're going to go learner mark is equal to, and I say, since the person's going to enter it, since the person that's using my computer is going to enter it, it's going to be input. So I'm going to say input, and I'm going to ask what is your mark next they're going to enter in the maximum mark so i'm going to say max mark or the test max mark is equal to input i'm going to say what is the maximum mark Finally, hoping that all of y'all know how to calculate percentages, we're gonna calculate what is the percentage. And if we remember from maths, if we want to remove a percentage, we put there divide by 100. Now I want to put in a percentage. The first thing I put is percent. So I'm gonna just go short form per is equal to what is the learner's mark? I'm just going to copy and paste it. Maybe faster than me type in. All right, so what is the learner's mark? Divided by what is the maximum mark? And when I take these two marks and I multiply them by 100, I'm going to get a percentage. And if that percentage now is greater than equal to 30%, then that means the person has, has passed. So that's what I want you to do. I want you to write out the if statement now to check, has the person passed or failed? If the person has passed, you're going to say, okay, you have passed. If the person has failed, you're going to say, better luck next time, try again. All right, so I'm going to save this file in the folder. I'm going to call it pass or fail. All right. Now remember, all these files is in the OneDrive link that I have put up yesterday. So if you go to the OneDrive link, you go to click on the link, it'll take you to the site and it'll allow you to download the files. 
I've changed it slightly. And if you notice, you'll when you go there, you'll see that you have lesson one and two files all in one place. And today's lessons, all the files that we worked with is in the second part, right? And the char count one that we did was that homework that you had to do was count how many characters yesterday, right? All right, so I got a question. Can you share the link? Yes, I can share the link. Hold on, let me just get it. Right, so here's the link for the OneDrive. And for those of you that couldn't find the website of, for Africa Teen Geeks, here's the link again for Africa Teen Geeks, right? So it's your chance now to see if you understood the if statement and write it out. Is there any other questions that I can go through or help you with if you have any problems at this point? Because I know I did cut off at the start. Okay, so if there's no other questions, I don't want to keep you all any longer. Thank you so much for joining me today. I will see you tomorrow where we'll go through more conditions. Okay, I got one. Okay, so which part don't you understand, Smith? Python method. Right, so, okay, the if statement. Okay, so all you need to understand about the if statement is you'll always write out the if statement and after the if statement is a colon. Now, the condition simply means what you are checking to be true or false. Now the if statement only can check true or false, nothing else. So I can separate my work and say a condition that is true or false by simply typing a program out by checking. And the easiest one is with numbers. And I can say, all right, is the number that the person entered greater than the second number? Now this means the person has entered the number. So let's assume that the number is three. And let's assume the second number the person enter is 12. So what's going to happen is the computer is going to come here and say, all right, the first number is three and the second number is 12. So is three greater than 12? And remember, this is a condition now. So it's going to come back with an answer of yes or no, true or false. Yes or no means true or false. So whenever I say true, it means yes. Whenever I say false, it means no. So is three greater than 12? The answer is yes or no. In this case, the answer is no. Three is not greater than 12. Now, the if statement only will work if this is true, meaning yes. So because the answer now I got is no, this part of the work will not run, the one that's indented. And because I've got two statements here, I got an if and an else, the else part of the work will work only if the first one didn't. So my question to myself will be, is three greater than 12? No. So this is not going to work. And because this didn't work, this didn't run, it's going to come in 
automatically run my second line else. So it'll say, okay, because the first line didn't run, my second line in my statement is going to run. So the number two must be bigger than the number one. So if I look at it, is number two bigger than number one? Yes, 12 is bigger than three. The same thing with the tip. When we had two statements for the tip. The bill, let's say the bill was 350. Remember now, the if statement when we write a condition out will only work if it is true. Now, if you notice in this case, there's no else. So every line will run. So I go float bill. So the bill is being converted to a number. So I go, right? So this is going to be 350. And I'm going to check, is 350 less than equal to 500? Yes. 350 is less than equal to 500. In fact, it's less than 500. So because my answer is yes, when it comes to this line, it's going to say, okay, because my answer here is yes, it's going to work with the indented work. So it'll say tip is equal to the float of the bill. So it converts the bill again, and we're working out the tip. And finally, output the tip. Then it'll come to the next line. Now you'll notice that this is an if again. So it's going to come here and it's going to say, all right, I'm going to check for myself. Is 350 greater than 500? And the answer is going to be no. 350 is not greater than 500. So it'll come here. The answer is no. Because my answer is no, it's not going to run the indented work. It's not going to read these two lines. You see, these two lines will only work if this condition is true, if the answer is yes. These two lines will only work if this answer here is yes. So that's the if statement. And what I did after that was I said, okay, because there's only two outcomes, you can either, your bill can either be less than 500 or greater than 500. I can convert this into the if else statement. And I'll be going through more if else statements later on tomorrow. So don't worry about too much about that second version two of it. The first version is fine. You can write out one thing at a time, check one item at a time. Right, I'm hoping that clears your or question up slightly. All right. All right. So if I no other questions, thank you so much again for attending. And we'll be going through more of the if statements tomorrow. Have a good afternoon and keep safe.